Greetings to everybody. First, I would like to express my deep gratitude to organizers who made possible this marvelous meeting. Um, and perhaps as a continuation of the question which was posed for the previous speaker, I will um, speak about the droplet evaporation method as a potential scientific tool for the detection of supramolecular order in water. Uh, <clears throat> so what we heard uh, yesterday and perhaps um, also today, it is that there are many, many phenomena um, discovered in water that are not covered by academic established science and uh, that would be regarded by it as pseudoscience or even uh, so-called pathological science. But to open-minded researchers, of course, these phenomena are real and uh, demand uh, further, deeper research and uh, further explanations. Uh, of course, uh, perhaps they cannot be tackled by uh, ordinary methods like the measurements of pH or ORP and so on. And uh, perhaps at least some of these phenomena would demand uh, new methods to be developed. And of course, uh, then to be standardized. At first, such methods uh, could be clumsy and unreliable, as I suppose was any method at the beginning. But later, uh, they can be, of course, a very useful scientific tool uh, to uncover further um, mysteries of water. <clears throat> so one of such promising new methods is uh, the so-called droplet evaporation method of uh, uh, so-called DEM. Uh, these are two pictures. Uh, uh, first, I think it was uh, discovered or developed by Ruth Kübler from Berlin. Uh, after that, further developed uh, by Dr. Bernard Kröplin, uh, who also had his laboratory. He was also a German scientist. And uh, it is currently researched by um, Professor Georg Schröcker from Salzburg. And uh, it was two years ago that uh, his uh, marvelous work was presented by Dr. Pierre Marl, who is here uh, among us. And uh, this uh, lecture uh, inspired me uh, to begin uh, with this method at our institute. Uh, so let's uh, have a quick look um, on what is uh, DEM about? It has, of course, its strengths and its weaknesses. We may say that it uh, gives very rich possibilities of scientific research. So it can tackle many areas, of course, connected with water and liquids. Um, it has a good potential for uh, standardizing procedures and uh, as you will see it is very sensitive to subtle differences in water so of um, impressions in water um, or influences and uh, uh, it can be subject to thorough uh, computer-based analysis uh, that can reveal many patterns that uh, would not be um, <clears throat> seen by only by our eyes or mind. Of course, because of uh, its, let's say, um, <clears throat> uh, young <laughs> state, um, it, um, it has its weaknesses. One of the weaknesses is just um, this sensitivity. Um, it can be sensitive even to an experiment, experimenter. It is a so-called experimenter effect. Uh, so that if uh, two different persons 
would do these drops, the results may be different for, for even the um, <coughs> same water on the same day. So special care should be taken to overcome this weakness uh, because otherwise we have a high variability of the results. The second is that uh, there is only a partial scientific or theoretical understanding of uh, droplet residue formation. So this means that uh, the explanatory power uh, is uh, somewhat weak as yet. And the third, we do not yet understand uh, the relation between uh, droplet remnant formations and uh, what do they mean uh, in relation to the stored vibrations or order in water. So the relation between water and this remnant uh, remnants is not uh, yet clarified. But uh, nevertheless, um, the DM method has already achieved uh, many applications or application fields. You see, it can be used even for the detection or monitoring the diseases via blood drops evaporation. Then uh, it can be used as a tool for testing uh, the quality of beverages or food. Uh, then for testing uh, water quality or even type of origin. Uh, for testing the quality of seeds that were uh, soaken in water and then this water is uh, used for uh, droplet formations. And uh, to find any form of supramolecular order, for instance, uh, water memory within water or uh, water solutions. And of course, also for screening the so-called experimental effect that I told before. Uh, this picture represents three different types of red wine, for instance. Uh, one uh, made um, by organic methods and another uh, by some other bio-organic. And so the difference can be seen, you know. Um, now the scheme of DM methods. So you must first have a certain water or liquid solution, um, some sample, then you drip the drops on the microscopic slide, of course, uh, according to certain procedures. Uh, then you put the slides uh, to some safe place uh, so that water can evaporate, and then uh, you get uh, <coughs> water remnants or residues. These are mineral residues. And uh, you put this under the microscope and take the images. Then these images can be further analyzed uh, either by eye and mind, of course, via certain uh, rigorous algorithms or uh, through computer analysis. Now, this is one of the proposed mechanisms, physical mechanisms, uh, that was published, uh, you see, in 2009. There are also other articles by other um, scientists. So, uh, the main idea is that uh, uh, while water drop is evaporating, the colloidal residues are entrained toward the edge of the drop uh, so that at the end uh, we get this ring-like structure. And one would expect that uh, if we have more of these residues, so the so-called that TDS or totally dissolved solids, um, you would have higher concentration, these are ppm or milligrams per liter, uh, then you would expect uh, larger rings, but it is not necessarily so, as we can see from these two pictures. You see this water uh, had three times less uh, dissolved solids, yet it, its ring is uh, 
much larger. And uh, it is interesting that this is a tap water with no very, well, very beautiful structure at all. And this is a healing spring water. <laughs> now, I would like to show you how this is formed. So, this was very difficult to catch right this moment of uh, crystallization. And you can see this is uh, 100 times magnification. And it's now 40 times magnification of the same process. And um, now just look. Now this is it. Um, our um, DM method, so developed at our institute, is based either on specially developed algorithms used in visual evaluation of, Im of images or computer analysis of drop residue images. Uh, now, this computer program um, computes the frequency distribution of distances, these distances among all pixels. So it has a very large number of these uh, all distances, and one would think that uh, it, is, it would come to no result, but as you will see, uh, we can come to a sort of uh, frequency um, distribution, something um, very interesting. Um, then our method has a unit of measurement, which is represented here, and this is just a random distribution of uh, dots or unstructured droplet residues, which is sometimes found, but of course this is artificially made. And uh, it can then produce frequency distribution graphs as seen here. So this is, uh, this, these are distances, these are frequencies of these distances. And um, then the, our computers program can analyze further such graphs. And of course, uh, statistical analysis, an analysis is then possible. Now you can see various frequency distribution graphs. Uh, this blue one is from our unit. So from the, let's say, the most random um, uh, formed drop, uh, with uh, maximal entropy. And uh, this is for the artificial image of ring-like structure. It is such a forum, saddle forum. Uh, while these two graphs are stand for these two um, pictures of uh, real images. And this blue again is, is our unit, our so maximum entropy drop. And uh, you can see uh, the difference uh, between them and uh, between this unit and uh, the true picture. <coughs> now, these are further examples. Now, again, this unit, uh, then uh, graph distribution for this picture, for this one, that one, and so on. So you see, for any formation, we can get each graph. Uh, because this analysis is somewhat still rough, um, we, we can get similar uh, distributions for different pictures, it is true. But on the other hand, uh, we can get, uh, you know, the repetition of uh, different pictures which are similar. This is a tap water. Um, uh, so that you can see reliability of this analysis. Uh, this is interesting. This is the same tap water. This is the origin, you know, of this water. And uh, this was uh, uh, used uh, from the pipe of the kindergarten. I mean, the same water. And you see how these different images differ from each other. and. Uh, also something like the spectral analysis 
of this this is uh, these distribution graphs um, so that every of these pictures has its own uh, fingerprint <coughs> now I would like to present you some further uh, pilot research that we made just to see uh, what different areas we can tackle by this method. So we researched, for instance, the temperature effect on mineral water with relatively high totally dissolved solids, it was 1,580 milligrams per liter. And uh, you see a typical image for the room temperature of this water. Uh, then there is something like a phase transition or phase shift from room temperature to 50 degrees centigrade and a very similar picture were retained at 70 degrees centigrade, so in the same region. And then again the shift at 85 degrees centigrade and you can see that uh, the images of uh, this water that uh, was at 85 degrees centigrade. Of course, the drops were made at room temperature for all these different waters. Uh, you see that even the drop formation was no more circular, um, but the TDS was around the same as here, you know. So it seems that uh, certain inner structure of such water was broken and uh, you see that therefore you can see this great difference. Now we studied further the um, influence of sound on the droplet residue formations. Uh, you see here is a control uh, tap water and uh, the water subject to sound and uh, the structures of uh, these two rows are not very different, however you can see very interesting uh, color shift from this where there is a much of blue or even violet to this where green predominates. But of course this is the test and this is the control. Now uh, yesterday we heard a very interesting um, presentation of James DeMeo about uh, organ energy and we also tested uh, this organ form the so-called organ tubes, not quite organ accumulators, but uh, something that would um, also accumulate organ energy and transmit it. And we transmitted it to water. And uh, look, this is very interesting now. This is the same water, of course, unexposed to this uh, tube. And the water exposed to the organ energy and you can even see the coloration of uh, these formations that are absent here and it is of uh, bluish color and it was very interesting to me that yesterday James spoke about this bluish color too. And these are true colors, not some false ones. <coughs> Again, we were interested uh, because uh, just uh, we know for a certain informed salt um, by a certain method similar to homeopathic um, in impressions and uh, uh, we were amazed to see that the water that was exposed to such salt uh, made quite different patterns it is this on the lower well it doesn't work very much uh, and this one on the upper row represents the control. Uh, so that even these inner structures are absent here, but uh, other structures were formed. Now this is the case of uh, sensitivity of uh, water. This is uh, mineral water, as used before, um, to very subtle um, influences. Now the experimental effect, uh, just to tell you, these are two different experimenters and there are distribution graphs for drops uh, seen here. And uh, what is interesting is that uh, this was done by the experimenter two, this was done by the experimenter 
one, but influenced by the experimenter two. And you see, uh, we got almost the same distribution graphs for both, <coughs> but even if they were performed by two different persons, but the second one, you know, influenced the first one. Now, uh, just before that, I mean, there was a question about the um, intention and influence of water. I think that is what the question. Now, <laughs> here is an answer <laughs> from our experiments. Uh, we tested a spiritual hero or, or a teacher, uh, and uh, he was asked uh, to influence the ring formation of uh, droplets, you know, and we used uh, this mineral water again. And this upper row, uh, row stands for control. The lower one uh, stands for the test. So he was told uh, to make this central hole um, thicker and the ring thinner. And you can see the results. And it was repeated then once more on another day. You see his achievement was not so marvelous as in the first case, but it was still very impressive. And we calculated with our computer program, we analyzed these pictures, and uh, both were um, significant uh, below the 1,000s, you know. Um, then, um, well, these are graphs for the CIS two experiments. Uh, you see the differences. These are distribution graphs. Um, oh, wait, I will not go into this. Now, uh, we made this experiment also by another healer. So she was told now again to make the center hole thicker and the ring thinner. And you see, this is control, and this is her achievement. So we see that we can influence water by mind, not only water, but actually the formation of droplets from this water. Uh, and here, is, this is seen the energetic effect of the healer. You know, this was a situation of uh, influencing water. And you see this interesting shift of uh, um, frequency distribution from the control one uh, to the tested, you know, so this influence water was really quite different. Uh, and in a way, this proved the energy field of the body, which is, of course, uh, um, denied by academic science. And uh, this is with the end of uh, the, this pilot research. Um, we were interested. Uh, in uh, this phenomena, if uh, water can be influenced by different types of glass or by informed glass on non-informed glass, what would be the results? Uh, so you see, we had three different sorts of glass. One was Duran glass, uh, then the other glass was crystal glass, but uh, there were glasses uh, with no special influence, and the influence or programmed or informed glass. And uh, here, the upper row stands for five minutes of influencing, you know, of standing of water in such glasses. And what you can observe is that uh, the, these images are very similar. What does it mean? Only five minutes was not enough uh, to have a high impression. Uh, now, take a look on six hours of exposure to the glass. You know that water was for a six hour in the glass. You see uh, very different images. And again, this uh, bluish color, <laughs> which can remind us of this organ, perhaps. and. Uh, these pictures are quite different. Uh, you know, these three rows, you can differentiate very quickly. And you can see also the repeatability of these pictures, the consistency of them. 
and we see that even there is a great difference between the control glass, so non-influence, and the so-called programmed glass. I think it was programmed by sound. And you see ring-like structures here, but no ring here, only the central patches. So quite, quite a different story. And uh, in a way, uh, this proves that uh, we can impress uh, glass with uh, certain uh, physical means. But now, this represents our more systematic research uh, that was published three, uh, three days ago. <laughs> and uh, this was um, an experiment, a uh, thorough experiment, because previous slides were just pilot research. Now, this was more systematic research in which we tested what happens to water uh, just aging in uh, glass vials for one hour, one day, one week, one month. These are rows, you know, represent time. Uh, while the columns represent uh, that um, this water, uh, surface of this water was exposed um, uh, to, to small surfaces, you know, only to the vial uh, walls. Here uh, we put inside the vials um, some small balls and here very small balls so that the surface here of all glass was much bigger. Um, we, of course, we achieved many results from uh, this study and I'll present only one of them uh, because uh, and because we found a certain relation between two parameters uh, <coughs> that um, tackle this maximum uh, point of the frequency graphs, you know, and uh, we did not see any relation uh, from one hour. We see certain relation established after one day then a very strong relation and very significant are one week and uh, of course it remains also after one month. Now this is uh, the published article uh, in uh, this journal Entropy. Now conclusions and future directions. So in spite of weak explanatory power DM can demonstrate many unusual phenomena of water stored influence like previous temperature exposure, effects of sound, exposure to subtle as yet physically unidentified physical radiation like organ, or even in exposure to informed glass or soul, uh, salt, then um, of human energy, of human intention, and also the experimental effect. DMN can be used for deeper and thorough analysis of water orderliness, it could reveal some further mysteries of water, but it should be more standardized, subject to further systematic, thorough, deep research to achieve a deeper and more comprehensive theoretical understanding of mechanisms that are behind this. And of course, it should be connected to other methods of water research, uh, like conductivity measurements, near-infrared spectroscopy, and um, this dynamic light scattering about which we heard yesterday. So thanks for your attention.